Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to the Hour of Visitation, episode number 83, Armor and Weapons, part two, the Breastplate of Righteousness. Welcome to you all. This is a pre-recorded message, so I won't be able to greet you all individually, but hello to you all who are watching on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Thank you to all of you. We appreciate you. Bless this seventh day that the Lord created, sanctified and set apart, a day like no other. Come on in. I'll give you time to come on in. As usual, I will make announcements at the end of the message. Praise God. God bless you. When you are seeing this message, it will be June 4th. Excuse me. Yes, June 4th, 2022. Welcome to you all. God morning to you all and God afternoon. To all of you who are watching now and on the replay, we praise God and thank God for you. Hello to my moderators, Latoya, and to my wife, Cherie. God bless you. Hello, Hold Lopez family. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for participating. Thank you for all of you who have bought any of the books, who have made any donations. We thank God for you and give God praise and honor for you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for your support, your encouragement, your love your letters. If you would like to say any letters, you can also do that at the P.O. Box 12713, Kansas City, Kansas, area code 66112. And if you would like to send any prayer requests, you can do so at etiengraves at gmail.com or memo at etiengraves.com, or you can text at 909 area code 485-8679. Welcome to you. If you would like to find out more information about the shows or see any past shows or about the conferences, or if you'd like to purchase any books, you can do so at the website, etiengraves.com. Thank you, Anton of SciComp for the excellent work you do. We thank God for you and appreciate you. Even though this is a pre-recorded message, it still will become, it will be um, aired live and it will be moderators or a moderator on the live chat. So please do not mention any political terms or medical terms. Glory to God in the live chat or if i mention anything that's controversial please don't put it in the live chat or any um celebrities government officials ministers or ministries or scientific websites or any websites for that matter in the live chat please respect the anointing and respect the, the moderators and we thank god for you since this is the sabbath day recording we will be taking communion at the end of this message so please get your communion ready to take with us at the end of the message, and also when I will be doing announcements. Thank God for you all. Okay. Without further ado, as we do every, every show, we blow our shofar before we release the message. We are releasing and loosing the angels. We are releasing jubilee and victory, and we are serving notice to Satan. This is an alarm for the angels to come forth and it also changes the frequency of the atmosphere. So I'm going to blow the shofar, then we're going to pray, then we're going to get started with the message, okay? Let's go, angels. You are loosed and released. Have your way. Glory to God, blood of Jesus, come forth. Thank you for victory. Satan just served notice. In the name of Jesus, let's go before the throne. All right. Heavenly Father, we come to you this blessed seventh day that you've sanctified and set apart, the day that you promised to rest with us and visit us as we rest with you. Thank you for blessing this episode of the Hour of Visitation and for your Hour of Visitation that will be made to manifest amongst us all. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness, your graciousness. Thank you for this day you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We enter into the gates with thanksgiving of our heart. We enter to your courts with praise. We thank you and hallow your name. So mighty, so wonderful, so awesome. Thank you. We bow down before your majesty on high, your highness, our king, 
Thank you for your righteous right hand. Thank you for being a just and just God and a, a God that gives us justice for all of our prayers. Thank you for your vengeance, for fighting for us, for protecting us. Thank you for being a wall of fire around us. Thank you for every single person watching now on the replay that you bless them, that we ask. Thank you for this opportunity and privilege to be able to minister to you and bless you. Let these words be pleasing to you. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to take over, have your way. This is your show, your ministry. We ask for your manifest presence here in this house, in this home, in this room, in anyone's house or home where they're watching, their offices or jobs or cars or wherever they're listening. We ask for your presence to fill that place up, fill that space up. Thank you for all the best gifts being in operation today. Thank you for meeting all those needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal, deliver, set free, save, bless, make whole, complete, provide. We love you and adore you. Anoint this message with fresh oil. Pour out oil and fire, mingle with the blood all over it. Beloved Jesus, we ask you to have your way, your righteousness, your correction, your justice, your love, your washing and cleansing of us. Thank you for regenerating us. Thank you for healing all those who have need of healing, who are, have any pain or any sickness today, that they be not the same after this message is over or even during that they be healed. Father, we thank you for loosening and releasing your holy angels and your purposes and your answers to prayer, for protecting the Wi-Fi and technology, to protecting our homes, protecting, protecting this word as a seed, that it brings forth results and fruit, and that it blesses you, and that we be not just hearers of the word, but doers as well. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for the moderators, thank you for Natoya Lopez and her family. We appreciate them. I pray for them, Father God. I pray for my wife. Bless her, Father God. I thank you for her. Thank you for our children. We just bless and thank you, Father God. We love you and adore you. We ask Father God to help us to understand each uh, part of these messages, to understand how to apply our armor, how to put on Christ, how to use our weaponry to fight against the enemy, to pull down strongholds and come against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world of spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank you for equipping us, the saints, with the right gear, the right uniform, and the right instruments for victory. We just bless you and give you glory, honor, and praise as we apply all of our armor right now in the name of Jesus from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. And we'll do it each time is what we learn. So we've already applied right now the helmet of salvation, our knowledge of Jesus Christ and our knowledge of our salvation, help, victory, aid, survival, vengeance, protection. And we thank you for today for teaching us about the breastplate of righteousness. Give you glory, honor, and praise and lift you up now and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. All right. This is the Hour of Visitation, episode number 82, 83. Episode number 83, last week or last weekend, last Sabbath day, we started this series, Armor and Weapons, part one, which was about the helmet of salvation. Hopefully we'll have all these in parts so you can go back and look at them and listen to them in succession. But this is Armor and Weapons, part two, the breastplate of righteousness. We need to learn about our armor. So. We go to our base verses that we're going to read every week at the beginning, Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to start with verse 11, verse 10, actually. And we're going to read all the way down through verse 18. And then we're going to focus on our subject for today. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we defined those terms last week. The wiles is the word methodia, which is his methods. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor, not a portion, not a part, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breast plate of righteousness highlight that for today and your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace that'll be another part and above all taking the shield of faith that'll be another part wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation that was part one and the sword of the spirit that'll be another part which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit that'll be another part and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the, sta all the saints. And I forgot also the loins girt about with truth will also be another part. So glory to God, hopefully we'll be able to learn from that and we'll see what we're going to focus on. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. We'll do that next week. But today I want to focus on the next part and having on the breast plate of righteousness the breast prayed of righteousness so let's get into, get into this the second piece of armor we're talking about today in Ephesians 6 is the breast plate of righteousness and something we need to remember about the breast plate of righteousness is it protects the vital organs if you want to google or duck duck go a picture of a breast plate you can see what it covers the area right up under the neck all the way down to the belly or the belly button or the belly like a you know a breast plate it covers the breast or the chest it protects what what's in that area the heart the lungs and other organs necessary for life but very important remember about the heart we're going to focus on that a lot today the heart but also the lungs the lungs were breathing and the breath of life is supposed to come forth from. Soldiers needed to wear a breastplate going into a battle. A breastplate protects vital organs such as the heart and lungs. Our righteousness, our righteousness, both in thought and deed, protects the core of our spiritual lives. The word blessed breastplate in the Greek is the word thorax or a corslet or breastplate. Corslet is a definition, a piece of armor covering the trunk if we go to isaiah 59 17 we'll also see another description of the word breastplate there let's go there quickly isaiah 59 verse 17 and it says for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and in helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. But focus on the first part. He put on righteousness as a breastplate. The word breastplate there is the Hebrew word shoyon, shoyon, S-H-I-R-Y-O-W-N. And it means a corslet as if twisted, coat of mail, harness, It means to free or direct. Hmm. Interesting there because the heart is basically free to direct the rest of the body. We're going to talk more about the heart in just a minute. But we know that it covers the breast, the breast, the part of the body from the neck to the navel where the ribs end. So they're also, you have your heart under there, you have your lungs under there, your esophagus, your belly, and you also have your ribs. A breastplate or corset consisting of two parts and protecting the body on both sides from the neck to the middle very important to remember okay before we focus more on this breastplate of righteousness and why it's over the heart and what it means i want you to focus on 
Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 18. Like I said, we've already discussed the helmet of salvation, but I want to talk about Halel. You're probably saying, if you haven't heard or read the book, who was Halel? Halel is the name of that anointed cherub, which so many of you believe is the name Lucifer. Remember, Lucifer is a Latin Vulgate term that's been added. His name was Halel. In Hebrew, the word is Halel. H A H H A L E L. And it makes sense because of all the angels we know that in, in the name El or E L, because remember, he, they are Elohim, and El is the highest God. He's El Shaddai. He's El Onyon. He's El, but Michael in the name, Raphael, Uriel, Gabriel in the name. So it makes sense that Lucifer, whose name is Halel, would end in E-L just as well. Praise God. I know there are other angels' names in the book of Enoch that don't end in E-L. I'm aware of that. But the archangels that we're told of, names do end in E-L. So it makes perfect sense. But in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 18, we learn about Halel and what he was and who he was. We're going to talk about the high priest in a minute and what the high priest did. The high priest wore a breastplate. And we're going to talk about why that's important high priest on earth but you know that the lord had a high priest in heaven whose name was halel who was the high priest of the sanctuaries in heaven he was over sanctuaries i'm gonna show you this in the word verse 18 says thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic so we know he was a trafficker that's what the trafficking comes from now from him therefore will i bring forth a fire from the midst of thee it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. The word sanctuaries is the Hebrew word mikdash, and it means a palace or a sanctuary or a chapel. He says you have defiled your sanctuaries, your chapels, your palaces. You have defiled those things that were made holy. So Halel, who was over sanctuaries and was also an anointed cherub that covered he was also a high priest or an high priest. That's why he wore the breastplate. That was one of his purposes. And we're going to see if you look down or go up to verse 13, more about this covering, this breastplate that he wore. Ezekiel 28, 13 says, thou has been and eaten the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. I know you see the word pipes, and you think about musical instruments, which is partly, partly part of it, but pipes also means a bazel. What's a bazel? A bazel is a place where you put jewels at. They hold jewels. So he had bazels over his covering over his breast area the chest plate where he had stones or jewels inside of them he is or was a high priest now we're going to see why that makes sense because remember we count those he only had nine we're going to see the high priest in the, the old testament had 12 stones Hallel had nine high priest in the, in the old testament had 12 well we know nine represents birthing or harvest and he's able to create you say what the devil can't create yes he can he can create something from something but he cannot create something from nothing like god can god can make can create anything from nothing the devil can create something from something example you ever um done ceramics if i give you or if you were given a lump of clay that's something and you can make a creation with that a pot a bowl um a, a vase you can make a creation with that so that's how Hallel works. Is he, if he's given something, he can create something with something. But he cannot do like God and create something from nothing. If you and I are given something, we can create something that's from something that's given to us. So nine represents that birthing. But the high priest in the Old Testament had 12 for the 12 tribes of Israel. But 12 represents unity and government. The Lord has taken that which Hallel was over and giving it to man 
to be in unity with him and govern over the earth, so to speak. In Exodus chapter 25, verse 7, it says, Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. The high priest wore an ephod. Remember, Hallel was a high priest. He has sanctuaries. But the high priest on earth wore an ephod. What's an ephod? The ephod is um, a high priest shoulder piece, like a breastplate. And it says a girdle, but I don't want to use that word as a definition because it's going to connect to the loins gird about, gird about with truth we'll talk about next time. But an ephod is something that they wore, a breastplate that they wore. Let's read more about it. Exodus chapter 28, verse 4. Exodus chapter 28, verse 4. It says, and these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod and a robe and a broidered coat, a mitre, and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron. Who is Aaron? The high priest, thy brother, and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So you see in the breastplate and the ephod go together. Ezekiel 28, 15 calls it a breastplate of judgment. Makes sense because it's over the heart, and the heart is where we judge from. Now look at Exodus 28, verses 17 through 22. You're going to see the description of the same stones that was the covering of Hallel, the anointed cherub that covered, who was the high priest at that time. The same stones that he had, you're going to see those same stones in the high priest ephod or breastplate with an ephod, except there's going to be three more as opposed to three less. Verse 17, Exodus 28, verses 17 through 22. Verse 17, and thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in in their closings and the stones shall be with the names of the children of israel 12 12 stones 12 names according to their names like the engravings of signet everyone with his name shall be shall they be according to the 12 tribes so each one of those stones represented one of the 12 tribes which connects with the 12 apostles which connects with the 12 constellations which connects with the 12 months of the year which connects with 12 being in a dozen you seeing how all this goes together, unity and government. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the end of wreathing work of pure gold, which I think connects to that whole DNA and creating thing, something out of something. More in Leviticus chapter eight, verse eight, it tells us this. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also, he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thummim. So not only did the breastplate that covered the heart, the lungs, the ribs, that the high priest on earth wore in Aaron's office, it also had Urim and Thummim in it. What's Urim and Thummim? The word Urim means flashing, flaming lights. The word Thummim means perfection, complete, complete truth or completeness. And what would happen was if there was a tribe that was operating in sin or operating outside the will of God on the high priest, the whatever color for that tribe would light up with the Urim and the Thummim, that would be the one who was identified as the sinner. Make a sense? Make sense? So, for example, you have 12 stones, 12 tribes, and the stone lit up for the tribe of Reuben. And when it lit up, that meant that this tribe was at fault or at sin. Urim and Thummim. The Lord spoke to the high priest or through the high priest with the breastplate. Hmm. Do you think that connects to us in the New Testament who speak with the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in via our heart? I think so. Remember, it's the breastplate of righteousness. The word righteousness in the Greek is daikaiosuni. It means equity of character or act, justification. 
The root word is dialkos, which means equitable, innocent, holy, just meat. And the root word DK, which means right as self-evident, that is justice, the principle of decision or its execution, judgment, punish, and vengeance. Remember, we read it was a best, blessed breastplate of judgment. Judgment. We have no righteousness. Only God has the righteousness. Isaiah 64, 6 tells us that. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness, excuse me, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. No matter what you do, no matter how many good works, no matter what thing you do in the natural, physically, it doesn't matter because your righteousness and my righteousness is just like filthy rags. We can do nothing with it. We need the righteousness of him. What does it say in Matthew 6, 33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see that? Our righteousness is as filthy rags, according to Isaiah 64, 6. But in Matthew 6, 33, we are told to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We have none. Looking for his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. We always focus on the seek ye first the kingdom of God part, but we don't always focus on the and his righteousness. And his righteousness shall be added unto you. The most vital organ behind the breastplate is what? The heart. The heart. The word heart in the Greek is the word cardia. K-A-R-D-I-A. Where we get the word cardio from. Cardio. Cardiovascular. Cardio comes from that word heart. Cardia. It means the heart. That is the thoughts or feelings the mind, the middle. Yes, we have a brain that thinks, but we have a heart that has a mind in it. And whatever goes to the heart will go to the brain. And then when it goes to the brain, then it comes to the mouth. You see how that works? So the heart has its own mind. You can know something, you can think something, but when the heart that it has its feelings, its thoughts, its emotions connected, that can change what the mind knows and affect it in certain ways. The Thyros lexicon says the soul or the mind as it, is, as, it, as it is the fountain and the seat of thoughts. Wow, the fountain of thoughts and the seat of thoughts. Doesn't the Bible say out of it flow the issues of life? Out of the heart flow the issues of life. So the heart is the fountain and the seat of thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, endeavors of the understanding, the faculty and the seat of the intelligence of the will and character for the, of the soul so far as it is affected and stirred in a bad way or a good way or of the soul as the seed of sensibilities, affections, emotions, desires, appetites, and passions. All comes from the heart, cardia, the area where we put on the breastplate of righteousness and it protects us, protects the heart. The breastplate correlates with the helmet of salvation because the heart and mind are used interchangeably in the Bible. The helmet of salvation covers and protects the brain, the mind, the thoughts, but the breastplate of righteousness protects the heart, which has a thinker in it as well. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. We see this. It says what we just talked about. It says, keep the heart, keep thy heart with all diligence means you have to do something you have to work for out of it out of the heart are the issues of life one more time keep the heart with all diligence for out of the heart are the issues of light where they flow the word keep here is the hebrew word not sar which means to guard to guard the heart to protect the heart to maintain the heart to make the heart obey 
to observe the heart, to preserve the heart, and to watch over the heart. Keep thy heart one more time. Guard it, protect it, maintain it, make it obey with all diligence. For out of the heart flow the issues of life. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you can be telling your mind or sacking your mind out thinking you believe in your one way in your mind, but no matter what you believe in your heart, that's how you're going to be. That's what's going to come out. And no matter how you try to hide it, what's in your heart is going to go to what's in your mind, and it's going to go to what's in your mouth. And once you speak it, speak it, it's done. Amen? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it will behoove us to take this breastplate covering of righteousness to cover our heart and guard it and maintain it and protect it and make it obey because if we don't, if it's uncovered, if it's open, then the fiery darts of the enemy that's going to affect our thoughts. If a man can think in his heart and be that, then there can be thoughts sent into the heart that are connected with emotions and uh, uh, affection and thoughts and feelings. Amen? Is this making sense to you guys? Amen. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says what? My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them mm, and help to all their flesh. Of course, the devil doesn't want you believing that. He doesn't want you even hearing that. So he's going to send other thoughts to try to pierce the chest area or the breast area or the stomach area. Try to send those thoughts to pierce. Not only does it cover the heart, it covers the belly. The Bible says out of the belly, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Many believe the belly is the area where the spirit man is located. So the breast plate of righteousness covers not only the breast, not only the chest, not only the lungs, or not only the heart or the ribs, but also covers the belly. The belly where rivers of living water will flow out of it, the spirit, it covers that area. So it cannot be pierced or cut or attacked in any way, shape, or form. Hebrews 10, 16, what does it say? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Jeremiah 31, 33, if you want to refer to that. But I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. You see how they go together? The heart and the minds connected. So there's a thought or a feeling or an offense you have in your heart is going to connect to your mind. That's why we have to pull down these strongholds. We have to keep our helmet of salvation on tight so they won't get to our mind, but then put on our breastplate of righteousness on real tight so it will protect our heart and our lungs and our breathing spiritually. Satan attacks our heart by trying to draw us away from God with lust and temptation. We talked about the trying of your faith. For the word of God Hebrews 4, 12 and 13 says this, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder, asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Mm. When it says discerner of the heart, discerner means decisive or discriminative. It relates to judging for fit judging, for being skilled in judging. The root word is a judge, to judge. One who passes or arrogates to himself the judgment on anything, an arbiter of a Roman procura procurator administering justice of God passing judgment on men. Mm. When it says, and the intents of the heart, the word intents is the word thoughtfulness, that is moral understanding, intent, the act of thinking, consideration, meditation, a thought, a notion, conception, and mind, understanding, will, 
manner of feeling and thinking. Satan knows that the Lord is a discerner of all things, hearts, mind, and soul. So he wants to prevent it and then, the, then accuse us, the accuser of the brethren in the courts of heaven and before the throne of God. Amen. Yes. Not only does Satan know that the Lord is a discerner of all things, including the all things in our heart, our imaginations, our thoughts, our minds, and our soul, but he also wants to pervert the heart, pervert it, pervert the mind, pervert the soul, so then he can go accuse us before the brethren. Remember the Lord told Peter, Luke twenty two thirty one, 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. What did he tell Job in Job 1, 8, 9? And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Or to accuse him before the throne in heaven to affect the feelings. In Matthew 13, 15, he said, but this people's heart is waxed gross and their eyes are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed, excuse me, and their ears they are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Let's say any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, I and I should heal them. Understand with their heart, the understanding with their heart, which is connected to the mind. When it says these people heart is waxed gross, it means that they've been stupefied or rendered callous and thick, not able to listen. They should see with their eyes, which means the mind, the faculty of knowing. In Hebrews 10, 22, it tells us, let us draw near with the true heart, not a false one, not a lying one, but a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Breastplate of righteousness will keep the heart pure, keep it washed with pure water. Only the breastplate of, right, bless, breastplate of righteousness will do that. It says in Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. The word consider means to observe fully, behold, consider, discover, perceive. Let us behold, consider, discover, perceive unto one another and provoke unto love and to good works. To exercise the mind and comprehend it. In James 1, 25 through 27, let's read this more. Read this, uh, read this as well to learn more about the heart. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. He, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure, pure religion and undefiled before God and Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So he says that, but deceiveth his own heart. So you can cause your heart to be deceived. First Peter 1, 22 to 23 says, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. You see the connection here with the heart and a pure heart and a true heart and love. Love. What is love? When you think about writing letters or symbols when you think about love you think about what a heart a heart is red represents the blood see how the heart and love go together you can feel love but the feeling comes from the heart you can understand love but the understanding comes from the heart there is nowhere else for us to have the connection and the identification and the feeling of love other than 
the heart. The love doesn't connect so much in our brain or on our feet or on our hands, but it connects in our heart. The heart is important. When we accept Jesus as our Lord in Christ and receive his salvation, where do we receive him in? Our heart. That is the key. So it would, like I said, behoove us to protect our heart with the breastplate of righteousness. First Peter 1, 22 through 23, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with the pure heart fervently, pure heart fervently. Only heart that's pure is one that is steeped in righteousness and not our righteousness because it's like filthy rags but in his righteousness we seek the kingdom of god first and his righteousness jesus righteousness that's what we seek interesting because when it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and the righteousness and all these his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you we connect this to the order of Melchizedek. remember aaron that's a different order there's an or order of aaron the aaronic high priest and the order of Melchizedek, which is an high priest or a priest of many. The order of Melchizedek is where you can obtain righteousness. How do we know this? Look at Hebrews 7, 1 through 2. There's a connection between Melchizedek and the high priest. And the high priest wears what? A breastplate or an ephod. And the high priest wears a breastplate or an ephod to to bring forth judgment, and the judgment is of righteousness. Remember the Urim and the Thummim, thummim complete truth, lights that operated and shine and lit up with complete truth. Hebrews 7, 1 through 2 says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Well, you're saying, what does Mikhailzik mean? Well, the writer is going to tell us in the very next verse what the word Mikhailzik means. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness. What does Mikhailzik mean? It means king of righteousness. Salem is peace or prosperity, so he's king of righteousness and peace. We're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and we're told that Mikhailzik is the king of righteousness. Melchizedek is a priest, not only a priest, but a high priest. Melchizedek is a high priest who operates in righteousness. The high priest in the Old Testament wore a breastplate to show forth righteousness. So how much more you and I, who are living now in the New Testament after, who are kings and priests after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek means kings of righteousness. We should most definitely be putting on our breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart, our lungs, our chest. So when there's an error or daughter of a thought coming or a fence or a feeling or emotion, boop, it bounces right off the armor, right onto the ground. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, after the order of king of righteousness. He was made an high priest, not a, an is one of many. He's made an high priest so you and I can be high priests. We're high priests after the order of Melchizedek, the order of righteousness, then we should most definitely be putting on our breastplate of righteousness. As a high priest, the high priest wore the breastplate. breastplate. Hebrews 7, 26, it says, for such an, there it is again, an, which is one of many, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, that's all righteousness, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Whew. That's deep. That's deep. Well, what do we know about the righteousness of God? What do we know about that?
We know that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says something very significant. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hmm. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are made the righteousness of God in him. We're seeking his righteousness, his right standing, his equity, his justice. And we can only do that with his righteousness. And we put on the breastplate of his righteousness, which tells us that he is holy, he is pure, he's undefiled, which makes us holy and pure and undefiled when we have that breastplate right of righteousness on us, where it cannot be any penetration to come into our heart, which is like a garden, which is like soil to plant a seed into our heart so it can grow, take root and grow up, up into our mind. And then when the thought is conceived, it comes out through our mouth to speak into existence, blessing or cursing, loosing or binding, one or the other. We were made the righteousness of God in him. We were made that because of him becoming sin for us. There's nothing you and I can do to become righteous. You can't go out and feed the homeless and say, I'm more righteous. You can't go out and volunteer at a homeless shelter or volunteer for after school programs for kids and say, I'm more righteous. There's nothing you and I can do to make ourselves more righteous except accept Jesus into our heart and his righteousness. Ours is filthy rags. It's his righteousness, which is why he did what he did on the cross for us to be able to put on that breastplate of righteousness to protect us. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eight tells us this, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. We read earlier about the true heart, a pure heart connected with love. Now we're saying here in Thessalonians, put on the breastplate of faith and love. What is the breastplate of righteousness? The breastplate of righteousness is the breastplate of faith and love. Urim and thummim. For, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Faith and love. We have to know that he loves us. For he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's your righteousness. You put that on, connected with your helmet of salvation. Protecting that heart. Protecting the thinker that connects to the mind. Luke 6 45 tells us a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. That means it has to be good soil for the treasure to come forth. That which is good. He brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So whatever in your heart going to go to your mind and cause your mouth to speak it. And when it speak it, it's put out in the atmosphere. Maybe that's why he says put on the whole armor of God, because having on the helmet and not the breastplate will leave you open for attack and thoughts and feelings and emotions and offenses to your heart. Having on the breastplate and not the helmet will affect you not knowing your salvation and your aid and your victory and your health and your healing and your defense and your protection. You see how they go together? Because the heart, whatever's put in there, a seed is going to grow up into the brain, to the mind, and then cause that thought to come and speak. For instance, cast down imaginations and every cast down thoughts, because if you don't, thoughts are going to be coming, going to come to your mouth and you're going to speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart doesn't have a mouth, but you have a mouth up here where your head is at, but the heart is connected to the, to the mind that connects to the mouth. What's put in your heart as a seed, if it's good seed and good, good soil, it's going to bring forth good treasure, speaking good things. But if it's not, if it's evil, it's going to bring forth bad things. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Because as you think in your heart, then you're going to tell it to your mind, and then you're going to say it and believe it, and then walk in it. Amen? 
Can I get an amen? Amen. So now that we read that, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The breastplate of righteousness covers the heart with the righteousness, which is of God, the justice, the equity, his righteousness, not ours. Melchizedek is king of righteousness, a high priest. We're supposed to put on the breastplate of righteousness and be kings and priests and high priests. Matthew 15, 11 tells us this. It's not that which goeth into a mouth that defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defiles a man. What we just read, for the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if the Bible's telling us it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, it's what comes out of the mouth. So if there's an abundance of evil in your heart, if there's abundance of doubt, abundance of strongholds, abundance of lies, abundance of whatever's in your heart, guess what? It's going to go up to the mind, the thinker, then it's going to come out of your mouth. So it's not what's going in your mouth, it's what's going in your heart, because what's coming in your heart is going to come out of your mouth leaving you open for attack. The breastplate of righteousness will protect you. Just quickly, some things that proceed out of the heart. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see, out of the heart. I want you to see this really quick. Give me just a second. Mark 15, 19. Excuse me. Matthew 15, 19. Why is it important to put on this breastplate of righteousness? Matthew 15, 19. 15, 18. Let's go there. Matthew 15, 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. You hear that? What comes out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. If there is no breastplate of the righteousness of God, whose we are in Christ Jesus, if there's no breastplate making us um, just and equitable because of the righteousness of Jesus, who, who knew no sin but became sin, if that's not covering our heart and it's open, it says those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. What kind of things? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, adulteries, fornications thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. Think about that. These things proceed from the out of the heart. They go in as a seed, and as they sit and the ground's not cultivated, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies proceed out of the heart, which goes to the mind and comes out of the mouth. Then there's action. It goes into the heart as a seed, grows, takes root, grows up into the mind as a thought. The thought becomes words, and then your words become actions. Verse 20 says, these are the things which defiles a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defiles not a man. It's what's going into the heart. And if there's no breastplate, there's no covering over the heart to protect the righteousness that's in Christ Jesus, the righteousness in our heart that we have no righteousness of. And then even Jeremiah 17, 8, and excuse me, 17, 9, and 10, the connection says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
What does that mean? Why is it saying that? Because we got to do some gardening over the soil, over the ground of our heart. If we're casting down imaginations, if we're pulling down strongholds, then we got to do the same thing with our heart and do some gardening. Get some of those seeds out of there that are evil seeds, seeds that are going to bring forth fornications and thefts and false witnesses and blasphemies and murders and adulteries, basically sin, which is conceived in the heart. Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You see that? It goes in as a seed, but eventually comes out of a, as the fruit of a doing. Goes in as a seed, but it has to grow. And when it does, a seed is going to produce fruit, whether it's good fruit or bad fruit or rotten fruit. It's going to produce fruit. Amen? Boy, I got to tell you, I thank God for my wife. She's amazing. So what should we be doing? We need, we need to apply the blood. And I'm going to talk about in the last um, part of this of the message about the armor and weapon, how all of the weapons, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the loins go about with truth, the feet shot with the gospel of preparation of the gospel of peace, our shield of faith, our sword of the spirit should all be covered in dripping blood. Not just armor that's just dry. It should be covered in dripping blood. I'm going to show you that in the word, but that changes it. It's not just armor now. It's armor covered in the dripping blood of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We need to apply that blood to the armor as well. Apply the blood. First John chapter three, verse 21, 20 and 21 says, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we then have we confidence toward God. Mm. That's what the blood is for. The blood is for convicting, correcting, judging what's in that heart, judging what's in there to make sure nothing that comes out of it will affect what comes out of our mouth and defile us and bring forth rotten fruit. We need to apply the blood to his righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness, the Greek word cardia. Cardio connects to blood. You know, the heart pumps blood circulating throughout the body. Very important. But look at Romans chapter 3, verses 25 through 26, and I'm done. Romans 3, 25 through 26, and it says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. Look at that. Through faith in his blood, didn't we read about faith earlier, and then love, to declare his righteousness. Faith in his blood, and the love is declaring his right. He became unrighteousness for us to be righteousness. Faith and love. Faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. Cleansing the heart. Condemning the heart. That he might be just and the justifier of him excuse me i messed up for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of god let's read it all together whom god has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission removing repayment or payment of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god verse 26 to declare i say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. You have to do it through faith in his blood and declare his righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. I have been made the righteousness of God. When do I do this? After I judge and correct what's in my heart. Till that soil like a garden. Get rid of all the weeds. Get rid of those things that bring forth evil fruit. Pull up that ground. Pull up those seeds. Pull them up. Glory to God. Check it. 
put on, then you put on that breastplate of righteousness. So whatever the devil tries to send into your heart via thoughts, via feelings, being emotions, being offenses to your heart, it will not take root because you're standing there like a gardener, guarding the heart, keeping your heart, keeping those things from coming in there. But you, how do you do that? By applying the blood, but by a putting on, having on, it says, the breastplate of righteousness, right standing with God. As a high priest, what do priests do? Priests take communion. Remember, Melchizedek came and brought Abram bread and wine, which represents communion. But the breastplate of righteousness protects you from those thoughts the devil wants to bring into your heart. Those feelings, those emotions, those bring them to your heart to connect to your mind, to go out through your mouth and then be evident in your actions. The breastplate of righteousness says otherwise. I apply and I put on the breastplate of righteousness, which I am righteous in Christ Jesus. I repent of my sins. Anything is in my heart, take it out. Anything that's going to bring offense to you, take it out. Anything that's going to bring forth and conceive evil or sin take it out in the name of jesus so now you have two things now you're putting on your helmet of salvation and your breastplate of righteousness with which are connected you're connecting your mind the thoughts the imaginations words and thoughts pulling down strongholds perceptions misperceptions feelings attitudes pulling down or keeping your heart guarding your heart pulling out the weeds and the bad seeds from your heart so nothing can get in there from the devil he can't penetrate and bring thoughts into your mind he can't penetrate into your heart through feelings and emotions glory to god now we have one two pieces of armor glory to god that are protection and all those thoughts are just going to bounce off of that breastplate like it's nothing and don't forget it's not just for protection but it's also as a badge or a uniform for a high priest the forerunner has entered for us even Jesus, after the order of Melchizedek, a high priest wears the breastplate with the stones on it, the Urim and Thummim. What's Urim and Thummim? It would identify the sinner. It identifies the sin in your heart, identifies it so you can cleanse it and get rid of it. Glory to God. And then wear those, the, the, the breastplate with your head held high because of what these stones represent, unity and government. Each one has a particular meaning. I don't have time to go over them right now, but they have a particular meaning. Even so, that Hallel word. Amen? Okay. Glory to God. I'm finished. That's it. Hopefully, it's giving you more understanding about the breastplate of righteousness, what it covers, what it means to walk in righteousness. Remember, it's nothing that you can do. Just like grace. There's nothing you can do to receive grace. Mm -mm. That's up to God. You can't make yourself good enough to receive grace or make yourself good enough to receive righteousness or make yourself good enough to avoid the penalty of sin, which is death. It's only because of Jesus. We are made right, the righteousness of God in him, through him, because of him. And you have to have, has to be in your heart. There's no room for his righteousness and things are going to defile you. Unrighteousness. That's why he's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, king of righteousness, king of right. The breastplate of right, your heart right. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that's gone forth. Thank you for your understanding. Your word says in all you're getting, get understanding. Help us to understand about this armor, how to apply it, how to put it on, how to keep it tight, how to cover it with the dripping blood. Thank you for helping us to understand how to use our weapons. Thank you, Father God, that we're learning, Father God, to protect our mind and our heart and the thinker in our heart and our mind, that no thoughts that are not of you can come and take root and plant seed. I pray, Father God, with everyone watching now and even myself, that you cleanse our heart, that you show us anything in our heart that's not of you any seeds that are bad so we can till that ground and plow it and bring up those seeds and pull up the root and pull up the weeds and only thoughts of you father god thoughts that are from you thoughts that connect to your word in our heart 
that manifest in our mind and through our speaking and through our actions. Forgive us, Father God, for defiling ourselves with things that come out of our mouth by the things we allow into our heart. Forgive us for not guarding and watching over our heart and keeping things from getting into it, Father God, that are going to affect from it from, from the issues of life that flow from it. Forgive us for not recognizing that the word cardia for heart connects to blood and how we need to have faith in the blood and declare your righteousness, your son's righteousness for the remission of our sins. We need you, Father God. We need you, Jesus. We need your righteousness. Thank you for your righteousness. Cleanse us, correct us. We apply our breastplate of righteousness now to protect from all the fiery darts and arrows of the enemy, the thoughts, the offenses, the trials and tribulations, the circumstances, the memories. Cleanse them and take them all away. We bless you and love you, Father God. Bless this Sabbath day as we rest with you. Bless all your people that's watching. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I hope that blessed you. That was the end of the hour of visitation, episode number 83, the breastplate of righteousness. And of course, if you're thinking there's some things he left out, I never cover everything. I only give you what the Lord has allowed me to receive or showed me um, or through some study or research. That's the only time I do it even whatever, you know, the Lord used my wife to bring forth to as well. I'll never, I don't, I can't go over everything, but that's the beauty of it. You take what you feel like is left out and you take it to God and ask him to fill in those blanks. Add him to add, to, ask him to add to this. Ask him to make it personal. How does this relate to, relate to my life specifically? What's in my heart that needs to be taken out? Help me to apply um, the armor and put it on. Help me to apply the blood to the armor. That's what you do. You take these messages and you ask God to expand on them. Turn it into like a homework assignment or just kind of fun assignment and let him build on it. Glory to God, because he will, because it's his message. It's all to him. He gets all the glory, all the praise and the honor, but let him build on the message. Let him confirm what was heard. Ask him, Lord, was what he was talking about right? Is it right? Is, it, is this from you? Ask him. And once again, not only are you learning, but you're also developing a relationship with him where he's teaching you and you're learning to hear his voice and you're learning to hear his thoughts. Okay? Glory to God. All right. Get your communion ready. Um, I will be back on Tuesday for the hour of uncovering. And we're going to do Q&A on Tuesday. Question and answers. Q&A on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Q&A Tuesday night, June 7th, I think. Let me make. Yes, June 7th, Q&A, Hour of Uncovering, episode 89. Thank you for all of you who have given. Thank you for your donations, for your love, your support. Thank you, Natoya. Excellent job. I appreciate you. Thank you, Cherie. Great job uh, moderating. And thank you for the research and the scriptures. Praise God. Me and my wife are a team. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God for her. I thank God for you all. Okay, get your communion ready. Get your heart ready. Don't forget era of the blood, levy of the blood in August, August 12th, August 13th in New Orleans, Louisiana. You can go to eraoftheblood.com. Um, coming next week, the link will be posted for the hotels if you want to get any discount. There's plenty of seats available, free registration, free tickets, for participation. Hopefully you all will be able to join. Most of you will be able to join, but if not, of course, it'll be live stream. Uh, glory to God or it might be recorded but it's going to be shown one way or the other so if you want to have it live streamed then hopefully you can come and participate glory to God all right if you want to purchase any books you can go to the website at com or the shirts you can also text us at 909 area code 485-8679 and there you have it
Praise God. Now it's time for communion. It's time for communion. Get your body and blood for the seventh day. This is the first communion we're taking in the month of June, our new month. Glory to God. So before we take it, just do something different. Just just repent. Repent of all your sins, your sins that you know. And if you don't know what you did, ask God or just take responsibility for it and just cover them all. Repent for your sins. Father, I repent of my sins. I turn. You want to confess them? You can. If you're standing in the gap of someone or interceding for someone, repent for them on their behalf before we even receive this. Thank you, Father. Repent of all my sins. Bless you. Forgive me of my sins. Excuse me. I thank you, Father, right now that we take this that represents the body and the, the body of Jesus. We thank you right now. We bless it and give you thanks, Jesus. This right now represents your body that was given for us as we learned that, that you became sin and you knew no sin, no sin just for us to receive your righteousness. You took all your righteousness and put it up to a place where we can receive it as an exchange as you take all of our unrighteousness, all of our filthy rags. We could never do anything to make ourselves perfect or make ourselves good enough to receive you, but only because you made this sacrifice. All we have to do is receive you and then put on the breastplate of righteousness, put on the helmet of salvation, put on Christ, as the word says. Thank you for the exchange, for taking all of the penalties, all of those evil things that proceed out of my heart or come into the heart. Thank you that you took them all on the tree, all of them, all those things in our heart that are evil, all those things of our heart that don't produce life, that produce rotten fruit, bad fruit. We ask you to cleanse our heart, wash our heart, uproot and take out the weeds that defile us to our thoughts and to our words and to our actions. Right now we receive the lamb in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through faith and love, we receive the faith part right now with the body. Now it's time for the love. We bless and give you thanks, Father God. Jesus, we thank you for this cup that represents the new covenant, the new testament, the new walk in your blood. But of Jesus, we thank you for having your way. Thank you that through faith in the blood, we declare that we are the righteousness of God now. Now that we have taken that, the exchange, we are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. We are kings and priests. After the order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, of equity, of justice, of right standing. Thank you for the blood that does that, the blood that cleanses us, the blood that cleanses our heart, the blood that makes us right, the blood that covers us and cleanses us and makes us free. We thank you for this blood that we take inside our body, the blood that connects to the cardio area, to the heart, where all the issues flow for our life, where all of the, the blood pumps. We thank you right now for being your righteousness, being righteousness in you, being right standing with you. We love you and adore you. Thank you for change for us and those who are taking this for and removing all things that defile. We receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay. That's it for today's message. This is part two, armor and weapons. Breastplate of righteousness. Next Saturday will be part three. We're going to go over the loins, gird about with truth. That'll be part three. But as we're learning, continue to put on your strongholds. Continue to ask him, 21 days, June 4th, coming up. Continue to ask him, Lord, pull down my strongholds. Show me the strongholds I have. Pull down these mindsets. Now you're also learning to apply and put on your armor. You've learned about putting on the helmet of salvation and what that means about help, have help, saving, aid, victory, defending. 
protecting your thoughts, casting down thoughts and imaginations. Now you're learning about the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, it talks about the imaginations of the heart, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the connection now between your thoughts, your imaginations, your feelings, your emotions, your soul, you have the two pieces of armor to cover it. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. Know that you are the righteousness in Christ Jesus because of what he did. Amen. All right, I call you blessed. I love you all. Thank you again, Natoya. Thank you again, Sheree. And I will see you all on Tuesday for the Hour of Uncovering. Be blessed.